Just before we get into this video, guys, if you want to follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, the links are here. And if you also want to support me on Patreon as well and help out my channel, that would be absolutely awesome as well. But let's get on with the video. Hey guys, it is Wingy here and welcome to a brand new video. Now, as you may be aware, the other day they released the second trailer to the new Venom movie starring Tom Hardy. And I love it. I can't deny it. I absolutely fucking love it. But the main thing that has come from that trailer is everyone is asking, well, what about Spider-Man? How is it connected to the MCU, if it is at all. Now, I'm a huge, huge, huge Venom fan. He is my favourite Marvel villain of all time. I've grown up with him. I absolutely adore him. So what they're doing with this movie, obviously at this point it is unclear, but I'm going to offer a few suggestions as to what could happen or what I think they should do in terms of the Spider-Man thing. Because let's be honest here, as great as Venom is as a character, as an individual, we all really want to see him as the villain against Spider-Man. Or do we? But anyway, here are some of my my suggestions as to what Marvel and Sony should do. Now this one is kind of the least likely and I guess the least ideal as well. So we see Eddie Brock get the suit in the Venom trailer and a lot of people said well hang on how's he got that then because obviously the symbiote or symbiote as they say in the trailer that goes to Peter Parker first and then it develops an attachment to Peter sort of understands his powers as Spider-Man and then Peter rejects the suit then it goes to Eddie Brock who already resents Peter Parker and now he's got this suit that just increases his hatred of him and also mimics Spider-Man's powers but in a much much cooler way. You can't really do that if Eddie has the suit first but what they could do is establish the hatred for Peter by having the suit leave Eddie which makes Eddie resent Peter Parker and Spider-Man for taking away his suit. You get the black Spider-Man for a bit and then eventually he rejects the suit and it goes back to Eddie. So you sort of get the same storyline but just a bit more round the houses to get there. Like I say, it's not that ideal. I don't think that this could fully work, but I do think that it is workable. And especially with Marvel, if they're in charge of it and writing it, as I imagine it would be in a Spider-Man movie and not in a Venom movie, I'd say it could work as both. But either way, if it's written well, it could really work. However, the main point against that would be, why didn't you just do that anyway in the first place. So who knows, we'll have to see. The second suggestion is have it as a flashback. Instead of Eddie getting the suit first, like I just said, just do it the normal way, but you don't actually see it on screen. Tom Holland is rumoured to be having a cameo in this new Venom movie. Now, whether or not that is true, we have to wait and see. But if that is the case, you don't really need to do the full symbiote story. You could just have it as a flashback in the same vein that we didn't need to see Uncle Ben's death again in Spider-Man Homecoming. I think one thing as well, because Spider-Man 3 was just oh so bad but because it was handled so poorly in that movie then sony and marvel might want to try and stay clear of that people might associate the whole peter parker emo phase thing with the whole venom symbiote and no one wants to see that again so instead you can have this like five maybe ten minute flashback or maybe a flashback throughout the movie showing peter parker as the black spider-man and rejecting the suit now i doubt this would then go directly to eddie brock based on the way that they've shown it in the trailer but it could always go back to the life foundation and then eddie brock gets the suit. Again, it's not perfect. It's not 100% ideal. In an ideal world, all the rights to the characters would be in Marvel's hands, but they're not, so we do have to work around it. But it could be interesting, and it would be a way to incorporate Spider-Man into this Venom movie without him overshadowing things. Because let's be honest here, you want a Venom movie to have Venom stand on his own two feet. If you put Spider-Man in there, you run the risk of it, well, not really being a Venom movie anymore. So yeah, flashbacks, they could work. And then my third and final suggestion is just not have it linked at all. Now I know, I know some people are going to be saying to me, well how can you have Venom without Spider-Man? And I get it. I really, really do. I'm firmly in the camp where I do think that Venom should be a Spider-Man villain. I love seeing him on his own, but we need to see him against Spider-Man. However, if they can't do that and they won't do that, then just don't have it link at all. And to be honest, I don't think that's 100% a bad thing. Venom is a very, very interesting character in his own right. Movies like Deadpool have shown us that an anti-hero character, who has, I guess, the right intentions but doesn't go about it the right way and an r-rated movie it can work now deadpool was obviously very meta and very violent venom could be a horror movie easily and i think that's the way that they want to go so to see a new brand of superhero movie or anti-hero movie venom is pretty much one of the best characters that has the best chance of making a successful movie with something different there is the worry as well that if they do go this horror route and it is proper violent and gory and you do see venom do some really really cool yet violent 
violent shit in his own movie, if they then link it back to the MCU and to Spider-Man, there is no way in hell that Marvel and the MCU are going to keep Venom in that tone. They are going to tone him way, way down. There's not going to be as much violence, there isn't going to be as much gore, probably not as much horror. So this awesome character that we see in his own solo movie would just be totally watered down to fit into somebody else's universe. And it's sort of like weighing the scales, like what would you rather see, like full on Venom or Spider-Man against Venom, but Venom isn't as cool as he was on his own. I mean, they could still do the whole horror thing, but I just doubt they will because in a Spider-Man movie, he's arguably the most kid-friendly superhero that we have. Parents are no way ever going to take their kids to see Venom, let alone that Venom in a Spider-Man movie. I mean, this Venom movie coming out, I think it's R-rated. You can't have an R-rated Spider-Man movie. Like, it just wouldn't work. And there's plenty of interesting storylines to take from the comics to use for Venom. So just stick with them. I know, like I say, it isn't ideal. None of these realistically are ideal, but I do think that there is some weight behind all of them, and with the right people on board, it could work. But they are just a few things as to what I would personally do with Venom. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Should we just leave him away from Spider-Man, or should we try and connect him, and how do we connect him later on down the line? Whatever you think, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it. Subscribe for more, because I do more Marvel shit as well, and other stuff. Follow me on social media, links are in the description. Patreon as well, where I've started doing movie reviews and other reviews on there. But if you do any of those things, then I would love you forever. Until next time, guys, you take care of yourselves. Goodbye.